let me tell you something. If you are a group of people that own and control the wealth and the resources around the world, you can control and create your own narrative about anybody and anything. Including stereotypes, right? That's exactly what it is. So the dominant white society, people classified as white, they are able to create these perceptions of people classified as black, quote unquote, African Americans, right? And as you see here, I'm at the Jim Crow Museum website, and this is exactly what the dominant white society has done since inception of the trans the transatlantic slave trade. Okay, these are the images, these are the caricatures. This is the history of anti-black imagery created and controlled by the dominant white society. Right, as you can see here, you got coon chicken in. Racism in the kitchen, Aunt Jemima, right? Caricaturing of black people, all kinds of things, man. All kinds. Savage car caricatures, racist cartoons, <clears throat> just everything that you can think of was created. These narratives, these stereotypes were created by the dominant white society. These are his, this is history, right? This is history. So I want to talk to you guys about the uh, LeVar Ball interview that was recently on ESPN. And uh, they talked about Lonzo Ball's recent workout with the Los Angeles Lakers, his private workout session. Um, there's reports that people are saying that, oh, the, the workout – the workout, the, according to the Lakers, they weren't blown away and stuff like that. Well, really, if they weren't blown away, why did they have a damn dinner with Lonzo Ball? They had a dinner. Well, matter of fact, let me take that back. They had a lunch and a dinner with Lonzo Ball. And they, he met with the Bus family. So that goes to show you something. They don't do that with, with a lot of top prospects. OK, and the, the amount of media attention this guy has, I mean, the, the post interview he done after the workout was a media frenzy. It was like basically Kobe Bryant was there. You know, that that that, that kind of media attention regarding one player hasn't been like that since Kobe Bryant was there. So this is a no brainer. The Lakers will draft Lonzo Ball. And, you know, all these media distractions, all of these, like I say, narratives that the dominant white society tries to create. They try to create these smoke screens. That's what they are. They're just smoke screens. And the Lakers are going to draft Lonzo Ball. Right. But um, about the interview, the interview uh, with, with uh, LeVar Ball, <laughs> again, this this guy, extremely entertaining. You know, LeVar Ball, just very, very entertaining um, outspoken, just, uh, <laughs> just a great overall personality, you know? Uh, so the interview they did with LeVar Ball, they talked about, like I said, the, uh, the workout with his son, Lonzo Ball and the Lakers, um, why he was reportedly banned to show up at the workout, the private workout with the Lakers with his son, right? He addressed that. And he also talked about his parenting skills, okay? About raising his three boys and how they were treating his mother and how, you know, some, some of his boys like Lonzo got in trouble and stuff like that. And, you know, the way that he was talking to this white uh, reporter from ESPN, obviously you're coming from two different worlds. So, the way he's explaining things, <laughs> these Neanderthals, these troglodytes, okay, white people, do not understand how it is and what it is to raise a black family. So they're trying to decipher this shit and like, okay, upside your head. 
uh, call the cops on this guy and get him arrested. That's child abuse. Okay. Upside your head is an expression. White people don't listen. White people come from a different world. Their their native land is the Caucasus Mountains. Okay. They are troglodytes at the end of the day, at the start of the day, and at the end of the day, they're troglodyte cave dwellers. But going back to what I was saying, they they they're come they come from a different world. They don't understand black families at all. So I'm gonna play this clip, okay, about the uh, interview with Lavar Ball and the end of the. This is the reporter here on the right who's talking about how he had to get LeVar Ball to clarify his parenting style uh, with his three boys. So let me play the clip and come back with my commentary. Here you go. That conversation was yesterday, and Jeff joins us now to talk about it. All right, so let's get into a couple of these uh, these items here. The part about hitting his kids is, is troublesome. Tell us the extent of that as far as you can tell, Jeff. Sure, I went back to LeVar afterwards to kind of get him to clarify those comments about uh, how he treats his kids. And he told me, listen, I, I did. I spanked each one of my kids once a piece, and that was all I had to do. Uh, it's not like I left any bruises or anything like that, but I did it to certainly instill some fear into them. And, and they responded, and they're respectful, and this was kind of the one time they each screwed up. And that was it. That was the extent of it, according to LeVar. It doesn't really square with what he said to you, though, because he's, he mentioned he got out of belt. He hit Lonzo upside the head a couple of times, which is not considered spanking. So, <laughs> See, I had to stop it right there. See, I'm going to stop it right there. He, he hit Lonzo upside the head a couple of times. You see, white people, man, I told you, white people come from a different goddamn world, man. Do you know how many times I've said, I'm going to hit you upside your head to my kids. I'm going to bust you upside your head. I'm going to bust you up your nose, boy. I'm going to bust you up your nose. That is an expression. White people, it's an expression. He does not mean that literally. It is an expression. I've been said that growing up as a child, my father said that many a times. He never actually gone upside my head, but that's an expression. I'm going to bust you up your nose. I'm going to bust you in your nose, boy. I'm going to go upside your head. Okay. That is an expression. I've heard that millions of times in black households. Once again, white people come from a different world. They come from the Caucasus Mountains. They are troglodytes. They don't understand black families whatsoever, which is why what, what you don't understand, right? What you don't understand about a different group of people. You create false narratives. You create caricatures. You create stereotypes, which is what they've been doing, right? As you can see here in the anti-black imagery from the Jim Crow Museum. This is what they've been doing. So just imagine if LeVar Ball had said that back in the Jim Crow era about going upside somebody's head. They will make a damn picture of a father or a black man, the monkey man or whatever, right? With the blue gum disease, which another false stereotype that didn't exist. It was a myth. They will have an image of a black father going upside his child's head, probably a newborn baby. And they'll 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 do that. And they'll probably paint the, the father as a, some kind of savage animal who all he does is beat his children. Okay, again, this is what the dominant white society has been doing and continue to do. They create and control the narratives, which is why they control all nine areas of activity. That's economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. So when you control the wealth and the resources in this country and around the world, again, you can continue to, con you can continue to control and create the narrative, therefore invent these stereotypes as you see here all right that's exactly what it is so i played that clip i just had to laugh it's hilarious he going upside his head a couple times and they're running with that like he really meant that literally and which is why the white reporter 
had to go back and actually clarify what he meant by that. See, they don't they don't know nothing about that. White people know nothing about that. And on top of that, the way you raise your kids is the way a grown man raises his kids. That's his, you know, prerogative to raise his kids how he sees fit. And so every time you have to be, you know, the, every time this happens regarding, you know, disciplining your children in mainstream media, the dominant white society has to step foot and play, you know, the Margaret Sanger role. They want to control the narrative. They want to act like that's a problem, right? Oh, it's a problem. That's abuse. We need to go ahead and do this, this, that, and the third when in fact, they have a different agenda. They want to exploit and they want to create these false narratives, right? About black families, right? Just like Margaret Sanger said with the way she study, the way she study black people. If once you don't understand your culture, you have to study black people, right? And when you study another group of people, you understand their strengths and you understand their weaknesses. Right. I'm trying to I'm trying to make a comparison with Margaret Sanger because when she studied black people and I always reference her all the time, when she studied black people, she knew the strengths and the weaknesses. Right. Because she didn't understand black people. But after understanding the black people, she under she knew the strengths and the weaknesses. Therefore, the quote that I always talk about, she says, the easiest approach to the Negro it's through a religious appeal. All right. That's our bread and butter. Religion, Christianity, Islam, all the Abrahamic religions. Right. So like I was saying, family, the whole point is, 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 is this real simple. White people, people classified as white are from a different world, okay? They're from a different world, and that world is the Caucasus Mountains. And to keep it in proper perspective, when, you, when you're trying to understand a black family, how they rate and how a black man and, and how a black father raises his children as far as disciplining their children, when you hear expressions like, go upside your head, I'ma bust you, I'ma bust you in your nose, I'ma, I'ma beat you to the white meat, yeah, uh, LeVar said he beats his kids to the white meat. So we definitely got to call DCF and, and CPS on him and get him arrested. <laughs> Can you imagine him saying that right there? That ex that's exactly why, once again, white people, they don't understand black family. They have to study us and understand our strength and, we uh, strengths and weaknesses like a Margaret Sanger. But this day and age, they really don't have the time to do so. That's, 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 therefore, they continue to make stereotypes, continue to make false narratives, cr continue to do this kind of imagery, negative anti-black imagery towards black people, right? All right. So those are my thoughts on that family. If you watched the interview about that uh, LeVar Ball and if you saw the workout with the Lonzo Ball and all that stuff, leave your comments down below in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the Jim Crow Museum. I've never been to this museum. I would definitely like to go, uh, but I always come back here and, and just read up on the articles and the things they have at the museum. It's just, it's just great history, man. This is great, great history. Keep white supremacy. Keep the history of white supremacy especially tangible items that, that they did against black people. Keep it like that. Stick it in their face. This is exactly what you've been doing to us for over 500 years. I love it. So one day I definitely want to visit the uh, Jim Crow Museum, man, and uh, check that out for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? But I always check out that website and, and, and read up on content and information they have at the museum and stuff like that. So. So one day I'm going to definitely check that out. But anyway, family, leave your comments down below. Make sure you follow me on social media at The Black Separatist. Both links will be down below in the description. Until next time, Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out.
Peace.